I T Information Technology The use of computers to transmit information stored in the form of ones and zeros. One and zero. Numbers without which the world of computers would be meaningless. And zero without which one would be meaningless. And this zero was discovered by an Indian. And the first written evidence was found in Gwalior. Welcome to Indian Institute of Information Technology and Management, Gwalior. Today, I am going to tell you a story. A story about the most spiritual land on earth. A country which is the cradle of the human race. The birthplace of human speech. The mother of history. The grandmother of legend and the great-grandmother of tradition. Welcome to India. My story is about Gwalior, this very city, which is famous for its magnificent historical structures. I know history can be boring for a lot of you, so here I have something new to show you. I call this the dual scale or the dual timeline structure. On the left part of the screen, there's a scale of time and on the right, there is a scale of kings and rulers who play important roles in the history of Gwalior. As both the scales move, I shall tell you some noteworthy details. The relative speed of these scales will give an approximate idea of the span of time during which a particular ruler was in power. So let's begin. The history of the fort is permanently linked to the former kingdom of Gwalior, ruled by several Rajput kings. The earliest dating of the fort is found in the publication of the Government of India on Gwalior which hints its marks of 525 AD in a sun temple which is said to have been built by the Huna Emperor Mihirakula. Historical research tells that the construction time of the fort is 727 AD. It was started by a local chieftain of the area named Surisen Kachwaha who was a local ruler of the village called Sihonia some 20 kilometers from the mountain where the fort stands today. On a hunting expedition, the Kachwaha Thakur Suraj Sen met a hermit called Sage Gwalip who gave him water and told him of a cure for his diseases from the water of a reservoir nearby which is called Suraj Kunt now. King Suraj Pal ruled 36 years, his son Rasak Pal one year and his son Narharpal ruled 11 years and died in a hunting expedition. Narharpal raised the Mahadev temple and founded Narhartela village. He was followed by Amarpal and he by his son Bhimpal who raised the Bhimeshwar Mahadev temple. Bhimpal ruled 36 years followed by Gangpal who ruled 21 years and built the famous Gangola lake. His son Rajpal ruled 10 years followed by Bhojpal who ruled some 9 years and built the famous shrine of Chatur Raj, a manifestation of Lord Krishna. It is famous as it is built on a single stone. Bhojpal was followed by his son Padampal who ruled 9 years and was followed by a long list of illustrious rulers. So you can actually see how long the list is. One phenomena here is that everyone has the word Pal in their names. Think of it, the word Pal seems to indicate how friendly these kings were, so nobody could invade their territory for like 900 years. The rule of Gwalior state was then duly transferred to the Pratihara family. Okay, these guys had Dev in their names. In a way, they meant to say they were Dev, which means in the developmental phase, and so they were quickly attacked by the Mahmud of Ghazni. In 1083 AD, Mahmud of Ghazni attacked to capture the fort. But he was unsuccessful. In 1196 AD, after a long siege, Qutbuddin Abak, the first Sultan of India, took control of the fort, but he lost it in 1211 AD. The fort was reconquered in 1231 AD by Sultan Iltutmish, the slave dynasty ruler of Delhi. Later, the fort was captured by Narsingh Rao, and it eventually went to Sikandar Khan, who continued for some time. Then came the rule of Tomars. It was only in 1519 AD that Ibrahim Lodi of the Lodi dynasty won control of the fort. After his death, Mughal Emperor Babur manipulated the situations and took control of the fort. 
But with his son Humayun's defeat at the hands of Sher Shah Suri, the fort came under the reign of the Suri dynasty. After Sher Shah Suri's death in 1540 AD, his son Islam Shah shifted his capital from Delhi to Gwalior as it was considered safe from the frequent attacks from the west. In 1553 AD, when Islam Shah died, Adil Shah Suri appointed the Hindu warrior Hemu, also known as Hem Chandra Vikramaditya, as the prime minister, come chief of the army of his kingdom. Hemu mounted several attacks from this fort to quell the rebellion in various parts of North India against the weak Adil Shah regime. The fort remained very active during 1553 AD to 1556 AD as Hemu had fought and won 22 battles continuously without losing any of them from this fort. He even defeated Akbar's forces at Agra and Delhi in 1556. A few years after that, Akbar captured the fort and made it a special prison for important prisoners. In this prison fort in the Mughal dynasty period, there was a saga of several unfortunate royal prisoners who were put to death. On the northern end of Gwalior fort lies the cenotaph of Maharaja Bhim Singh Rana, who is the most powerful ruler of the princely state of Gohar in northwestern Madhya Pradesh. Bhim Singh Rana occupied the fort from 1740 to 1756. His successor Maharaja Chhatra Singh Rana constructed the cenotaph in the memory of Maharaja Bhim Singh Rana. In 1779 the fort was won by the Sindhya clan of the Maratha empire who stationed a garrison here. But it was usurped by the East India Company. But in August 1780 the control went to Chhatra Singh again. In 1784 Mahadaji Shinde commander of the Maratha empire once again recovered the fort. There were frequent changes in the control of the fort between the Sindhyas and the British between 1808 and 1844 AD. However, in January 1844, after the Battle of Maharajpur, the fort finally came under the control of the Sindhyas, more as a protectorate of the British government. On the 1st June 1858, Rani Lakshmi Bai and a group of Maratha rebels captured the fortress city of Gwalior from the Sindhya rulers. The Central India Field Force under General Hug rose quickly advanced against the city and besieged the fort in the battle that ensued on 16th and 17th june 1858 rani lakshmi bai led the troops of chhasi and the remaining gwalior forces to defend the mountain passage to the fort and the city of gwalior the rani died on 17th june the second day of the battle of gwalior and today we are here to see the fort in all its glory but exactly how much do we know about the people who made it lived by it and died for it all right so that was my story hope you liked it now let's move towards some interesting facts about the famous fort itself here is the view of the gwalior city from the fort As I have already told you, the fort was built in the 8th century AD. This is another picture of the fort, highlighting the blue glazed marbles that have been used in its construction, which beautifully reflect the blue sky above. This is the main entrance of the fort. It is also called the Elephant Door, maybe because it's so huge. This is kind of a panoramic view of the fort. You can see how magnificent it is. These are some of the pictures I took last week at the fort so as to show you how it actually looks these days.
So that was the Gwalior Fort. I'm so happy to have been able to tell you so much about the history of Gwalior Fort. Hope you love India. Thank you.